Hello guys and welcome back to my channel Civil Construction and Tutor and in the previous video I had shown how to design a strap footing for three columns. In this video basically I will show you how to design a combined footing for three columns. So let us go to the e-tabs. So this is the building that I will be designing for and here I will provide a combined footing for three columns considering that there is shear wall as well. So it will require a foundation so it is better to provide a combined footing rather than providing a mat footing throughout. So let us go to the reaction. So we will be designing for dead load and live load only. So for this reaction I will be designing the combined footing. Now let us input the parameters. So the column size here is 400 by 400. Grade of concrete used for footing will be 20. Grade of steel 500. Bearing capacity as per this site it is 130. Similarly depth of footing from ground level. So let us keep this as 1.52 and it will be important for calculating the self weight of footing grid is spacing now so it will be grid a b and c but you can change as per your requirement for now it is a b d so a b and b d and the spacing is 3.213 so we can take from here directly it is 4.76 and 3.13 4.76 and 3.13 projection was left so we don't have any space available in this side and this side as well that is it is flush to the property line so it will be zero for the left and from the face of the column so and it will be zero for this face as well projection at the upper side you can provide the width as per the requirement so for now let us provide one one meter projection on either side and we'll check later on if it is sufficient or not so basically this is from the face of column not from the center line of column and this will give the total length of footing and total width of footing now in the node a1 a2 a3 so a1 and this will be b1 and this will be d1 you can change it over here a1 b1 and d1 and accordingly we'll put the service load over here 586 811 and 413 okay 587 and this value are computed considering the origin at this point that is 00, 0. so for this it will be 0 0.2 that is the center line 0 0.2 considering 400 mm and 1.2 in the y direction so accordingly we'll get for all these now center of mass of mat foundation so basically we can consider this as mat so lf by 2 and bf by 2 similarly center of gravity of load of mat foundation so you will get this value for either direction now we'll check for the eccentricity so eccentricity is 0 .00, 0 0.001 meter now net soil pressure so using this formula we'll compute the net soil pressure on either side that is for this we'll be neglecting the mx ix and y term because we are considering for this direction only so it will be my iy and x so that is why we computed ex to compute the moment in y direction about y direction only so iy this is the moment of inertia along y direction so b cube d by 12 so we are considering this direction so the cube term will be the longer side and this gives 113.94 meter for and area footing b uh, b in, uh, this is l into b so we get 19.9 meter square self weight of footing so this is the actual weight that will be considered that is due to the depth of foundation and the dimension so for now i have provided here overall depth of 650 mm we'll check that later on for that we are getting the self weight of footing as 323.31 and if there is any live load such as if it was a whole footing that is mat footing then there would be like live load due to car vehicles or due to the parking arrangement so for now it is zero total load will be 2134 kN this total load plus this and we'll get the moment p into ex as minus 30.01 kN meter similarly p by a this is we are simply solving these terms and we get this all now for the grid a1 and x so from the center of the gravity of the structure we are computing this value minus 3.945 and we will get the pressure 
108, 107 and 106 respectively. So all the pressures are less than 130 kilonewton per meter square. So it is okay. If the pressure was, let us assume 100, then it would have failed. So we had to increase the width of the footing. So for now 130, it is okay. Now we have to compute the average stress along the grid and bending moment. So for this grid, we'll be taking the average value. So for grid 1, 1, this is 1, 1 grid and the width is 2.4 and the length will be considered a maxim maximum of any two grids that is for this grid spacing or this grid spacing and we'll consider that length for the calculation of the moment. So for now it is 4.76 and this is the average swell pressure and we get the maximum moment considering WL square by 8 and factor value that is 1.5 so it comes as 455.43 kN meter so now we can calculate the depth so maximum moment is 455.43 kN meter and from SP16 the depth from bending consideration can be calculated using this formula so from this formula we get the depth required as 414 mm and that is the factor of safety we have considered we can simply put this over here. Now we have to check for two way shear. So here I have made three cases. One is the for edge column, for face column and for central column. In our case, this is the face column and this is the face column and this is the central column. But there is no any edge column. But if there was edge column, then we'll just simply select this corner or we can simply say corner footing. Then we'll have the case over here that is for edge column. But for now, we'll check for the face only. So we don't have to consider these things. And if there is any distance of column face from the property line, for example, from this face, then we have to enter the value over here. For now, it would have been zero. Now, for M20 grade of concrete, permissible shear stress is 1.12 Newton per mm square. This is from IS code. Now for face column A1, this is the, these two are the column face and it has zero distance from the property line so it will be zero and column load so it will take the maximum of these two value 587 and 413 for example if it was face then it would have taken the value of 811 so i prepared this excel sheet in this manner so for now it is central so for face column column load 587 we'll consider the critical perimeter for the section design and from the condition that is shear strength should be greater than the shear stress we get the value of depth required as 395 mm and similarly for the central column the load is 811 and it has a greater critical perimeter so the depth comes as 358 mm so 358 395 and from the moment we have 414 mm so we can provide our overall depth of 500 mm and check so clear cover 50 mm so effective depth along longitudinal direction it will be 440 500 minus clear cover minus uh, bar size divided by 2 so depth provided is sufficient against bending and two way shear consideration so depth is safe now let us check for the reinforcement so reinforcement will be checked for the maximum moment and it is 439.5 and minimum area of steel let us assume as 0.15% of BD or you can also go with 0.12% of BD so area of steel required is 2717 mm square now let us provide the size of the bar so assuming 20 mm bar spacing required 104 mm will provide spacing of 100 mm so we get the area still provided as 2827 mm square per meter now the summary of the design grade of concrete m20 grade of steel fe500 and providing 500 mm thick slab with 20 mm rebar at 100 mm center to center in the other side that is the transverse direction we can simply provide nominal reinforcement that is for this 0.15 percentage of BD. So assuming the as 12 and spacing as 150, 679. So we can provide 16 mm bar and that will give 1206 which is greater than this. So that should be sufficient. So providing 16 mm bar at 150 mm in the transverse direction. So I hope this video helped you and if it did help do like and comment in the video and share with your friends and if you want this excel sheet please click on the link in the description box and you will get a mail from us. Thank you.